It was the 150th anniversary of the Irish famine. You know, there was no 100th anniversary. It was still a Holocaust culture, even 100 years later. But at 150, you know, we've grown out of that. We are successful. We've survived. You know, it's generations ago. And, you know, I and a group of artists, we created a number of pieces that would commemorate the feeling of the famine and also transmit that, that we never want it to happen again. And a piece that I was able to create, uh, I used a, a skull uh, and I carved the Celtic designs onto it. And I made it out of gold because, you know, the golden skull, the, the whole idea, the glorification of the Holocaust in I Irish culture. Um, you know, sometimes can, you know, take away from the fact that people were dying of starvation. You know, it's kind of, uh, there's a, a great contradiction that goes on. It's almost glorified. Now for this particular sculpture, uh, you know, I wanted it to be real looking. So I used a real skull that I then made a cast of and, you know, cast it in uh, hydrostone, which is a type of plaster. And then I carved onto it the Celtic designs to make, you know, a kind of an icon to you know, commemorate the famine. You know, they're almost, in Irish culture, people almost worship the famine. And I wanted to, you know, create an idol, as it were, to, you know, express the, uh, the devotion that people have to that. And, you know, of course, the moving on from it as we, uh, you know, get the new message of a modern civilization that, you know, our culture has survived and, you know, we are moving on. I have, of course, the knotwork base on there, which is, you know, sets the culture in stone, so to speak, and, you know, so it, it can live on. One of the joys of uh, working as a Celtic artist is, uh, you know, creating original art and commissions for uh, different clients. Um, I've had the pleasure to make, you know, wedding rings, uh, furniture, mantelpieces. A particularly interesting uh, commission was a, a large bronze cross for um, a graveyard in Curdale Lane, Idaho. And it was a, you know, I had, did a wood, wood model, carved a piece of wood, you know, for the model, and then the cross was cast in bronze. And, you know, bronze, one of the ancient metals, you know, the Bronze Age. It was really uh, exciting and, uh, you know, to see my cross, you know, in a monument uh, outdoors. Um, the one, so when they were making the crosses, I said, you know, I have to have one of those. And I was able to, uh, you know, have one made for my collection. And, uh, and then I decided that, gee, I don't want to put it out in my backyard and have it turn green, that if somebody wanted to purchase it, that they would have the, the luxury of watching it age and turn green in their own environment. One of the great traditions of Celtic art is, of course, jewelry. And we've learned a lot about Celtic art and culture from pieces of jewelry and metalwork in general that have been found uh, buried in bogs and archaeological sites. Uh, the discovery of the Tower of Brooch in the 1800s really caused the, the major Gaelic revival that uh, happens at the turn of the century and you know, bringing back of the language. And so there's a great tradition of Celtic jewelry. Uh, Celts were very ostentatious. They wanted to wear their gold and their jewelries. I've been fortunate to, uh, you know, to be able to study making jewelry. And I have a, a line of jewelry that I've been creating, uh, Celtic crosses. And, you know, it, it's difficult to not copy pieces out of history when you make jewelry um, because it's so much, it's so vast. Um, every time I find a new medium of Celtic art, it turns out that it has thousands of years of pieces to study before you actually can then try and make your own and make modern ones. And, you know, in our line of jewelry, uh, we deal with the sacred. You know, we want it to be spiritual. When people wear their jewelry, um, you know, it should embrace their soul and, you know, and their expression and their, their vision of their self. During my career, I've had the pleasure of adding my designs to various building projects, private homes, churches, and spiritual locations, as well as creating Celtic environments for pubs and restaurants. 
One of my favorites is Hugh Olani's Times Square Pub located at 45th Street in New York City. The 40-foot neon sign tops the exterior mahogany woodwork that is counterpointed with gold-plated bosses. Inside, the restaurant is divided into three spaces, the mahogany side, the oak side, and the upstairs meeting slash private party room. There are a number of my designs and images hanging throughout. The mahogany side bar is topped with a hand-carved pub sign from an earlier location of the pub. We have a four-foot carved version of the donor disc in the dining area. A magnificently carved mirror centers the bar canopy. On the oak side, the columns are graced with original cast stone capitals and bases. The bar is then flanked on each side by faux stone arches. In the upstairs room, we have a copper metal effect centered with a faux stone carving using the megalithic design similar to Newgrange and Lock Crew. These are custom mirrors adorned with hand-tooled copper repose borders. Olunny's captures the spirit of the Celtic-designed environment, offering the ultimate in Irish hospitality. You know, one of the rewards of my career and my studies, years of study of this art form, um, there are pe people who are looking for their own roots. They know their Celtic heritage. And a lot of times they'll come to me because I actually understand what they're talking about. And I, you know, through interviews and questions that I might have and my experience with all the different mediums, um, I'm actually able to draw out of them actually what they want and you know, create for them a custom uh, commission, a piece you know, that is about their soul. You know, I get to put mine in there, um, but I am going to walk away from it and they're going to have it for the rest of their life. So I want it to be you know, the piece that they've created uh, then I almost become a tool for them. And it's been a joyous experience, actually. You know, I work for churches, I work for, you know, what I guess people would call regular people, like you and me. Um, I've also worked for, you know, people who are considered celebrities. Um, I've, you know, created pieces for Cliff Robertson. Uh, I did an extensive woodwork uh, for Don Henley. Um, and. Uh, Mickey Maloney of the Chieftains, uh, we have great interaction with them. They're, they're actually, their music, their success of their music created the stage for us as contemporary Celtic artists to be able to ply our craft. <laughs>